Okay, let's look at an example uh, problem. And what I want to do is I want to see if we can rationalize the crystal structure of lead selenide. It's a semiconducting material. Um, the stoichiometry is PBSE. That's the formula for the compound. And I want to see if we can figure out what the crystal structure is based on some of the things we've discussed so far in the course. All right, so let's get right down to it. So first of all, we've got some data there. We've got the, uh, these are the ionic radii of lead and selenium. So this is, of course, the lead 2 plus cation and the, lead, uh, the uh, selenium 2 minus anion. So as, as is often the case, but not always, the anion in a comp an ionic compound is going to be a little bit bigger. Um, often it is because it's accepted some electrons. And so what we want to do here is we want to figure out if we can, we'll see if we can figure out what the crystal structure is. So the first thing that we'll notice is the stoichiometry. Okay, and the stoichiometry is clearly one to one. That's one, um, you know, one cation to every um, anion, using the nice color convention that, you know, I like to use. Um, so without further ado, we could say, what are the crystal structures that we have available, the ionic crystal structures that we've seen in this course? So rock salt is, is the only one we've actually formally seen, um, but um, we've perhaps come across cesium chloride. I'll explain that very briefly to you. And zinc sulfide is another one. And finally, um, CaF2, fluorite, or uh, calcium fluorite. Okay, is, oops, F2 is another crystal structure. <clears throat> and so, um, rock salt, as you know, has cations in octahedral sites. Okay. Cesium chloride, um, I'll tell you, has the um, cations in simple cubic sites. Okay and simple cubic lattice of anions. Now, zinc sulfide has um, cations in tetrahedral sites, and calcium fluorite has cations in simple cubic sites, but you can see that the stoichiometry is different, right? It's one to two. There's twice as many anions. So just looking at our one-to-one -one ratio for lead selenide, we know we can rule out right off the bat that the stoichiometry is not correct for calcium fluoride. So now we're left with deciding if it's going to be octahedral, cesium chloride, or uh, zinc blend. <clears throat> or rationalizing, perhaps, if you already know which one it is, uh, why that's the case. So what we need to do next, then, is figure out the size of the cation relative to the size of the anion, and so we can work that out quite quickly. It's 133 picometers over 184 picometers, which turns out to be 0 0.72. Now that's an interesting value, because you might remember the size, the minimum size of the cation that fits into the octahedral site was 0 0.414, and the minimum size of the cation that would just fill the simple cubic site, as we worked out in another video, was 0 0.732. So 0 0.72 clearly fits into that. It's close to the upper range, um, but it clearly fits into the size um, range that we need for the octahedral site. Okay, so the last thing I could just show you is just really quickly um, what that is going to look like as a quick reminder. You know, um, see I just draw in for you these face-centered atom positions. I'll just to show the the um, the positioning of or, and, the, and the size of the or this particular interstitial site, right back, bottom, and right. And then if we go ahead and we fire the cation into the center, when we cover rock salt, you remember uh, what we said was, oops, uh, we said that this central cation touched front to back, bottom top, and right left. Okay. And that was the coordination number of six or octahedral site. So we now know that lead will fit into octahedral sites. And so it seems as though our crystal structure is sodium chloride. And in fact, it is based on stoichiometry and the side, the cation to anion radius ratio. Okay. So I hope that's useful. Um, thanks very much.